Shabbat Shalom again. And when the rabbi suggested, or rather told me that I needed to, to deliver the sermon tonight, and that I should base it on our Torah portion, I complained. After all, I am not the spiritual leader of Temple Concord, nor am I versed in Torah's hidden messages. But I listened to his video message, all about complaining, and then decided, since he was not going to let me get away with saying nothing, that I needed to solve this problem and move on, just as the Israelites needed to do in order to get to the Promised Land. After all that has happened here at Temple Concord over the past year, and since my speech to you last year at this time, I really thought I had nothing left to say to you about this synagogue and about our lives together. I had, last year, I spoke to you about my personal journey. This year, I've talked to you about Temple Concord's history, about our temple finance, financial challenges, and earlier, about the remarkable people who make this synagogue the great place it is tonight. What else is there to say? If you listened to the rabbi's message, you heard the word kvetching, but also my magic words, and that would be problem solving. I actually use those two words on my resume, apparently thinking I'm an expert in problem solving situations, able to facilitate diverse groups of people in order to address issues and problems toward collaborative decisions. This might be presumptuous of me, but on the other hand, the connection with this Torah portion, Temple Concord and me, might just suggest that I have a couple of more things to say to you. Delving deeper into this week's Torah portion, we see that indeed there was lots of gnashing of teeth and kvetching, and that the Israelites needed an attitude adjustment. They needed, in fact, a paradigm shift a move from the culture they were immersed in, one of blame of others and entitlement, to a culture where they needed to solve their own problems and figure out how to move on. In my professional life, I have had experiences in walking into a culture that needed a shift, a way of looking at life a little bit differently. Those I worked with knew something needed to change, but were unable to move thinking that someone else would solve the problems confronting them. This is what I learned about changing a culture. First, the more you find out about a new situation, place, or person, it's like peeling an onion. First you cry, and then you begin to cook it. Second, cooking means stirring the pot a bit, getting the bits and pieces to stick together to make something good. Third, never provide the answer to the problem. Rather, ask questions relentlessly. Listen to the answers given and then ask more. The result of this recipe is that people solve the problems themselves and then own their decisions. I have learned that answers reflect the past. Questions advise you about the future. Gradually, the culture of negativity and despair shifts toward a positive, energized community. And isn't this what happened to our own community, our own congregation? We have despaired at our problems, finances, dwindling population, and an old building. We have waited for someone to come along and solve the problems for us, or looking for someone or something to blame. Sort of like Dorothy, who went looking for a more exciting dream and found it in her own backyard. Have we asked enough questions about our future, about our problems, about our challenges, about our strengths? Have we asked ourselves enough times, what can I do to solve whatever challenges are before us? Have we asked, what if I do something that will help? What will that look like? How will I know it is helping? What good will it do for me? Be relentless with your questioning and begin to establish a vision of what you want to happen and how it can come to be. We do have everything we need to solve our own problems. We have the will, the energy, and even the knowledge. As Rabbi Fellman said in his video message, 
we need to roll up our sleeves and get to work. As a congregation, we are beginning to feel a cultural shift away from gloom toward delight as to who we are and how we are going to move forward. The concrete evidence we have that this is true is noticed in our increased membership, your increased financial commitment, and the willingness of individuals to give a bit more time for things that are needed for our temple to function. Every annual meeting like tonight at our honor ceremony, we see the solutions to our problems, the people who dedicate their whole being to their spiritual and religious home. I also learned that it often takes a long time, perhaps five years or more, to affect a positive change of a culture of an organization. We could be on the fast track. Rabbi Feldman has been here for three years, and we then, are we, two years closer to the place we want to be? Well, probably not, maybe a bit longer. After all, Rabbi Feldman is not the answer to our prayers. He is only the facilitator of our dreams and our spiritual compass. So keep those questions coming. Look for the answers in your actions. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom.